exercises. Okay, I am using a heavy tube and a medium tube. Now, if you don't have the luxury of having two tubes for each participant, that's unfortunate, you would have to use just one heavy tube, okay? We're gonna do a seated row. Now, once again, you can take the tubes over your shoelaces. They're gonna get confused where they are, so you have to remind them. Okay, just wrap them right around the shoelaces. This is how I prefer to do it. Now, once again, we're using two tubes because the whole idea here is you want to make this difficult enough that you can only do the exercise right around 10 times. So this would basically be level one, okay? To increase the resistance and make it a little more challenging, cross a band, okay? Even more challenging, cross both bands. And then, of course, you can add a heavy tube in there and uh, an extra heavy tube with a heavy tube, excuse me, as opposed to a medium and a heavy right now. I'm just going to cross one of the bands for right now. Now, this is a seated row. You're going to want to make sure that their knees are a little bit bent and they're not sitting out like this with their knees locked. You want to have their knees bent. You want to have them sitting up nice and tall. And I do everything half time, okay? Pull back, squeeze the shoulder blades out and out. Pull back, squeeze out and out. Now when you first start doing this type of training in your classes, people aren't really going to know whether to use light, heavy, medium, or whatever. So let them know that they need to practice and they need to figure out for themselves what they can only do about 10 repetitions at. Okay, you want to squeeze those shoulder blades in, out, and out. You want to keep the elbows right in against the body. Okay, let's do four more. And three. Now the last two, you'll notice my grip's going to change a little. Out and out, back, turn it up. Let's do two more of those type. Okay, I'm doing this so we hit more of the biceps because we're going to work them next. And out. Okay. Now we're going to change the angle just a little bit. You're going to drop one of your tubes. Usually you don't even have to take them out of here, but I'm going to move it for now. Now, you can make this a little more difficult by looping this around one more time. Now, this is what you'd want to do if you only have one tube, okay? And preferably use a heavy one. I'm going to cross them again, okay? And so this would be one level, and then crossing them would make it more difficult. I'm going to keep the elbows out a little bit this time. Once again, you're going to be sitting up tall. You're going to pull back, squeeze, out, and out back, squeeze those shoulder blades in and out. Back and squeeze. And once again, you can turn that up and hit the biceps a little bit more. But I prefer this exercise. Just keep the palms down, out and out. Now you're going to have some eager participants that are going to like want to use the heaviest band they can, are going to go crazy. So once again, you've got to watch them. Watch their facial expressions and make sure they're using correct form, okay, because they will get overzealous. Two more. Back, squeeze, out. One more time. Back, squeeze, out, and out. Okay. One more exercise. You just want to take a tube. You can wrap it around your hands. Okay, and just sit up nice and tall. And you want to keep tension on the tube, okay? Because they'll tend to pull and then let it flubber, flubber, flubber. You want to make sure that there's tension on the tube the whole time. You're just going to pull back. Just pull back and squeeze in those shoulder blades. Squeeze and squeeze, okay? Now, once again, you're hitting the back muscles at a little bit different angle, okay? So you are doing superset training the whole time through here. Okay, just two more. And one more time. And release. Okay. There's some back exercises for you. Now, I'm going to switch gears and go right into biceps because we just indirectly work the biceps. So we're going to burn them out completely. And I'll show you a couple more training methods. Now, for those last couple exercises, if you don't have the tubes, you're in trouble because you really need to have the tubing to do the back exercises. If you have DynaBands, you can do similar things with the DynaBands. You can pull the DynaBands straight back. You can wrap them right around your feet like this and use the DynaBands for a seated row. Cross them. Okay, so if you have DynaBands, you can use those, but you really need the pulling back motion. 
Okay, biceps. Now, once again, this is one of those areas where you want to make sure they're maintaining a neutral wrist. They, you don't want to see wrist back like this. You want to keep them neutral. Okay, feet about shoulder width apart. You want to pull the abdominals in, not squeeze the butt and really pelvic tilt. Just want to pull the abs in to get a little bit more neutral alignment here, the spine. Now, if you have someone that's just beginning, they can step on the tube with just one foot, and that'll give you a little more tube and it'll make a little less resistance. Okay, what we're gonna do here is just very simple bicep curls. Gonna come up, up, and down. Up, up, and down. Up, and down. Now, if you have dumbbells, and that's all, you don't have the tubes, so we're gonna take this a little wider angle right here. You're gonna really have to double those dumbbells up. Okay, because let's face it, how many bicep curls could we do with five pound dumbbells? You're gonna have to get them to double up and make them 10, okay? If you have eight pound dumbbells, you're gonna have to just do one arm at a time and have them doubled up to make 16 pounds in one hand, which really isn't that heavy if you're doing 10 repetitions, okay? Then another way you can do a bicep curl here is to come up, turn in, straight down, up, turn in, straight down. Especially if you want to do superset training and really burn the bicep out. You just went from basically a regular curl and now you're going to do it at a different angle. One more time, up, turn in, and down. Okay, right from here I'll show you a couple different things you can do. Okay, I'm going to show you some negative only training here, a little bit of that. Okay, you can, right from here, you can go right into a regular bicep curl. Remember, double those dumbbells up. Just bring it up and slowly down. Up and slowly down. Now, once again, you want to get them to have enough weight in their hand that you can only do this 10 times. If they're up right around 8, 9, or 10, just have them take their other hand and help them. That's assisted training. And take it slowly down. That would be negative only because they're getting some help on the way up, assisted training, and then negative only. They're basically performing the exercise in the negative position only. Okay, then for breakdown training, you'd want to drop a weight after you did those 10 exercises and keep going. Okay, you want to do these nice and slow. They're really, really, really going to feel this, okay? And when you're done with that, stretch that bicep out a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to show you another method with this arm, a concentration curl. Okay, once again, they can double the dumbbells up, and you can do breakdown training while you're doing this also. You want to put your elbow right up against your leg here. You can put your other hand right here, and you're just going to take it slowly up and slowly down. Slowly up and slowly down. Okay, now, if you don't have tubes, you can do the standing bicep curl first on each arm, and that you'd want to do is sit right down and do this on each. Or you could do the standing curl on your right arm and then really just burn the bicep out totally, doing a superset, come down here and do the concentration curl. The whole idea is you really want to stick right around 10 and you want to group all the training methods together to like totally fatigue the muscle. Okay, now if you have a body bar, and that's all you have, Okay, now, this is 12 pounds. And so if we did a bicep curl like this, that would be basically like six pounds in each hand. Now, we might be able to do how many? 400? So what you wanna do if you just have the body bar, okay, is you wanna hold it with one hand and take your other finger out here or just the tip of your hand for balance and do that same curl. Once again, you wanna keep the abdominals in tight, feet about shoulder width apart, and do your curls like this. So you're getting them to use 12 pounds in one hand. This is if you don't have the tubing, okay? And if you don't have the tubing and you do have some other dumbbells, you can do that curl and then go immediately into a dumbbell curl to do your breakdown training. Okay, so I would do one arm, if you've got the body bar, I would do one arm and then switch your grip to a reverse curl. Keep the elbows in and curl up because this is a lot more difficult, okay? So you can do this in between do a few of these in between, and then you can switch to the other arm and do your one arm curl here. You definitely need this for a little bit of balance. This way you're getting them to use heavier weight and they don't even know it. Because some of them just, some people are going to use one pound weights forever and they're going to be really bummed when they don't fit into their clothes and they're still going to eat pizza pie. We know that. 
So you got to sneak up on them. And then you can do the reverse curl again. Or you can start with this, do each arms. You know, there's a million different ways you can do it, but what you want to do is hit the muscles at different angles and do it very quickly and stick it around 10 repetitions once again so it's heavy enough. Okay, so that's biceps and upper back. And I'm going to switch on over to chest and move some of this stuff out of the way. And I'll be right back to do that. How am I doing? Ellen? Okay, the next body part we're going to work is chest, and then we're going to go right into triceps. Now, I tend to work the back first because that's the opposing muscle group, but you're getting a lot of action going on here up through the shoulders. So you actually kind of burn a little bit of the muscle groups out here towards the front, and there's a, you really need a heavier weight than what's usually available in the aerobics room to do chest. So, what we're going to start out with is a chest cross. Now, I'm using a medium tube right here. This is a very, very difficult exercise. So you're probably going to see a lot of people using a heavy tube at one level, which is fine. They can wrap it around their hands. Or the beginners are definitely going to want to start out with a light tube. Now, I'm going to show you the exact exercise, what it looks like here. It's basically like a bench press, only you're adding a cross in front. So you're getting that adduction in there to really squeeze the, the pectoral muscles, OK? So what it looks like is you're going to press out, you're going to cross, open, and press back. Now, when you do this with your participants, you want to make sure, because we're going to have them doubled up, probably half the class will have them doubled up. Once again, watch those wrists, and make sure they get the band down low enough on their elbows, because they do roll up and they'll grab your hair. Okay, so make sure they get it down low enough, and those wrists are straight, they're not bent back. You want to keep neutral wrists, so you're going to press out, cross, open, and back. Press, cross, open, and back. Now, I usually only do about eight of these, because pretty much that's about all we can do. It's a very difficult exercise. And back. So I might as well finish four more times. Then right from here, I go right into push-ups. So you're kind of working at a similar angle, but once again, it's doing that superset training where you work kind of from one angle and go right into the next angle of a muscle group. And then right from there, we're going to go right into an incline press. Okay, now push-ups. Once again, there's a million ways you can do push-ups, but the important thing is you need to get your participants to start doing them up on their toes and do regular military push-ups. They may at first only be able to do one or two. Fabulous. Tell them that's great. Next week, try and do three. Then the next week, try and do four. Because they really need to learn to challenge themselves. Because they should be doing push-ups on their knees forever. They're just never going to get anywhere that way. Now, as I showed you before, I use push-up bars because of my wrists. Too many years in the restaurant business. Um, these are great, but they also make the push-up a lot harder because you're up higher and you're going to go down in deeper. Okay, so that's what I use instead of those is I will have them get out of a couple platforms. Okay, so when you use the platforms, your wrists are in a more neutral position as opposed to doing them right on the floor where you've got those wrists bent back and that's just not a cool position for the wrist. At least I don't think so and a lot of other people don't think so either. Now obviously the higher up on those platforms you are, the more difficult this is going to be. Now I'm going to show you this on my knees first. What I have them do is I have them do them half time. So you're going to go down, way down in between, up, and up. So it's similar if you were doing a bench press laying down because you do go way down in between. So you're doing that on the push-ups. You'll be surprised how hard they are when you do that and especially when you're doing them slow. Down, down, up, and up. Okay, once they're advanced enough and they're doing these up on their toes, you can actually have them do it right up on the step. Okay, you want to make sure they pull that tummy in nice and tight when they do these. You can go down, down, up, and up, down, down, up, and up. And then there's other methods you can use here, like slow training, where you can basically, <clears throat> you're only going to be able to do half as many of these, where you go down, two, three, four, nice and slow, hold, up, two, three, four, down, two, three, four, and hold, and up, two, three, 
four. So there you're doing slow training. So you can go from your chest cross right into some real slow training, doing push-ups. You can opt for the, um, them having their feet up on the bench. If you have advanced participants, say that's one more way to challenge them. You know, rather than just going straight down and up, vary, you know, the speed. You know, just like I said, down to, up to. Um, you can have them vary the platform level. You can have them start out with one platform, add another platform and go down in deeper, maybe even add a third platform, just to change it, make it more intense, change the intensity also. So what you want to do after they're done doing these push-ups, okay, if they're not doing any push-up with their feet up on the bench, you're going to want them to have them fix their bench on an incline. Okay, now once again, one and three, two and four, three and five. You don't want any more than two platforms in between here. Have them get their dumbbells ready at the base of the bench. So once again, you're going to go right from one exercise smack into the next, okay? Now, you want them to have at least 10 pounds to do this. 90% of the people I know, women, men, maybe even children, can use 10 pounds to do a press, okay? So, if they have 10 pound dumbbells and they're fairly strong, they can add in more dumbbells, just like this, if you don't have large enough weights in your club. Now, if you only have the tubes and you don't have any dumbbells, you can wrap the tube, and I would recommend wrap way underneath, like four platforms, or if you only have a couple platforms under here, you're going to need to wrap it in and around, wrap it around your hand like this to shorten the tube up to do this exercise, and I'll show you that one also. Now, if you're very fortunate and you've got the tubes, you've got the weights, and you've got the body bars, you're golden, because you can also go right into using the body bar. Now, body bars don't weigh very much, so you'd want to use those last as something to finally burn the muscle out. So, you do the chest cross first, or whatever order you choose, but this seems to work best. You could do push-ups first, then the chest cross, and then come right over into this, and you're going to use that slow training method once again. Now, you're going to want to lay back and have your feet up on the bench for lower back support. Now, you can do a fly and open up and turn back in, or you can just do a regular press. Okay, you could start out like this and come up and turn in if you like. But what you want to do here is you want to do these very, very slow, unless you have the luxury of everyone having 12 or 15 pound weights in your aerobic studio. You want to bring this out four, three, two, one, and up, two, three, four. Now even if you're only using, like say you can't get anybody to like go up over eight pounds, when you're doing this really slow like this, after you did those other two exercises, they're really going to feel this. But you always want to encourage them to up their weight when the present weight they've been using is easy enough that they're able to do 12 or 15 repetitions. But you want to do this nice and slow. And once again, you can do a fly if you like. I think people are more controlled if you're just doing a press. I think it's easier to control in a group setting. Then after you did about right around 10 of those to further burn out that muscle, take your body bar and come right back up here and do a bench press. Okay, now remember, you've only got 12 pounds here, so their muscle is pretty fatigued, but this is gonna fatigue it a little bit further. Okay, now if you don't have the dumbbells, you're gonna have to do some more push-ups. Do push-ups first, and then I would say do the chest cross, and then come over and use the body bar last as a final tool. Now, you can also, after that, immediately... Oh, I didn't show you the tubes there. You all know what I mean. You're just gonna do the same thing with the tubes. I'll show you on this part. Okay, now, immediately after that, you can go right in to a flat bench press. Okay, or you could do a fly here. If you're comfortable with your participant's form, you can go right into a fly right here. Or, once again, just a regular bench press. But you gotta use heavy enough weight. You can only do it about 10 times. A 12 pound body bar will not cut it. It's just not heavy enough. Now, if you only have the tubing, 
Once again, you really need to be up on a couple more platforms, or you're going to take the tubes and you can wrap it around your hands, which I can't do very well in this position, so I'm just going to grab right here. Okay, so there's enough resistance, and you can just come up and cross, just like a bench press. Okay, but you definitely want to have them use the heaviest tube they can underneath here to get right around 10 repetitions. Okay, now you can add this in with the rest of your superset training. Now, because chest indirectly works triceps, we're going to go right into triceps right now. Now, you need all your platforms here. Definitely encourage your participants to always use, I really recommend four platforms because it's up more like a bench. I use five myself, and that's what I'm going to use right now. Okay, especially for triceps, you really need to be up this high to get a full range of motion to do dips. It takes you like an hour to put your, all your equipment away by the time you're done doing this. Okay. I'm going to start with an overhead press, and once again, you're going to have to get them to double up the dumbbells. With this, I'm going to do, I'm going to do some breakdown training right into superset training. Okay, now you want to get them to double up the dumbbells. They can probably easily get around 15, 16 pounds together to do this exercise. Okay, or maybe an eight and a four for 12 pounds. This is 14 pounds. This is an overhead press or a French press. So this is a position where they're gonna to tend to arch their back a lot. You wanna make them aware of that and pull their tummies in as tight as they can. They will arch a little bit, but so they're aware of it. Okay, you wanna keep your elbows in. I tend to go half time here, up and up, down, down, up and up. Now once again, get them to use heavy enough weight. I can't stress that enough for them to use heavy enough weight that they can only do the exercise 10 times. If they're using weight that they can do it 15 or 20 times, their benefits are really gonna be minimal. And the whole idea is you wanna put on muscle. Muscle burns 25% of the body's total calories. More muscle means your metabolism is gonna be higher. You're gonna burn fat more. And that's really what people want, is they just wanna lose weight and they wanna look leaner, and this will really assist them in that. Tell them stories like this the whole way through the exercise, and they won't even realize how many they've done. And you're gonna drop a weight, the breakdown training, and you're gonna go right in and do as many as you can more, which you might hit around six or eight more, okay? Then, for superset training, go right into another exercise, I have them throw their weights right on their lap to do dips. Now your beginners aren't going to be able to do that because the triceps are very, very weak in women in particular. So to do dips, you want to make sure their hand isn't the whole way up here. You just want to keep their hand on the edge of the bench. And this is why you need to be up higher so you can get more full range. If you're only up on a little tiny platform, your elbows are going to just kind of go like this. This way you get the full range. Now you can have them put the, their weights in their lap, the body bar in their lap. You can use the body bar for the overhead extension, but 12 pounds, well, I think they need a little more, but they know better because they know their bodies. So you might want to consider that as having everyone use a little bit heavier body bar and then maybe drop it and pick up a lighter weight once. So you can throw the weights in your lap or the body bar. Now this is another thing that you can vary. Okay, legs out, it's going to be harder. Pull your legs back in, it's going to be a little easier. You can go down four and up for two. You can go down, down, up, and up. Or you can just go slowly down, slowly up. You want to keep those elbows in, though, as much as you can. If you really slow this down and do some slow training, you're probably only going to be able to get, like, maybe three or four out of them if you do it nice and slow. Okay. Now, what I usually do next, you can do this in any particular order you want. This tends to be a pretty hard exercise going up overhead. That's why I usually do that first, plus the fact that your back may arch. You don't want to, you know, get too, get them too tired. Okay, right from there, I usually go right into like a kickback. Now, if you don't have tubing, you can use a dumbbell. Now, make them pay attention here. You want to step off 
with one foot so your bands are uneven. Now you can either use the handle, I like to grip right on the base of the handle. Make sure they've got their hand on their thigh for lower back support. And you're going to have the elbow a little bit up above the body. Now what works best for me if I tell them from your shoulder to your elbow doesn't move. From your elbow to your hand moves. If you say forearm, they don't really seem to get it. So if you say from your shoulder to your elbow is stationary, and from your hand to your elbow moves, that tends to work and they understand. Okay, now they can lengthen this tube as they need to, to do this. Okay, because they're gonna be pretty fatigued from doing chest, then going right into triceps. Okay, then you wanna have them switch, of course. And then once again, do the other side. Now they can hold on to the handle if they want, that's fine. You know, and they can just turn it back. But you just definitely want to make sure that they've got their hand on their thigh for lower back support. And usually you'll probably do about 10 of these also, even though it's usually the last exercise that I do for the triceps. Now, you can do this in different order. You can use a dumbbell also. I tend to like the tubes better. If, but if you don't have them, you gotta use a dumbbell. Make sure they're getting the full extension there and squeezing that muscle too. Okay, there are tricep push-ups that you can do. I will show them. They're very difficult. And I would suggest if you're gonna do them, I would probably do them every class so your people would get used to doing them. I'm gonna use the grips for these. Now what you wanna do with these is you can have them use the platforms. I'm gonna use the grips, okay? Or they can do them right on their fists. Now if they have rings, they're gonna have to turn them in. Some people don't have a problem bending their wrist back, okay? That's fine, they can do them like that also. But the whole idea is you wanna keep the elbows right in close to the body to do these. You wanna stay in nice and close and push up. Now most women aren't gonna be able to do very many of these. And I don't know many women that can do any up on their toes. It's just a very hard exercise. Okay, so try and get them to just do a few. Okay, this will be the first exercise you wanna do if you choose to incorporate this, and then move into the other order. Or you could start using the tube for like a warm up, and then go into the rest of them. It just depends on how you group them, which makes a difference whether it's strength training or endurance, and depending on the amount of weight you use also. Okay, our last section, I'm gonna show you some shoulder work. Now, I showed you working back and biceps together and chest and triceps together. You can work back and chest, opposing muscle groups, biceps and triceps, like that, but the idea is you wanna try and work largest muscle groups to smallest muscle groups. I showed you this way today because it's a good way in your body sculpting classes so they burn out the biceps and triceps when you've already indirectly worked those muscles. You just wanna work them a little bit further and a little bit harder. But if you have a limited time, which most body sculpting classes unfortunately are only an hour, you really need about an hour and a half to really do a good solid strength training body sculpting class you could, if you're going to eliminate anything, you could eliminate the biceps and triceps because you do hit those when you're doing chest and back. But it is best that you work all the muscles to get a balanced workout, okay? And I'm gonna come back with shoulders. Okay, I'm gonna do the shoulders last here. You don't have to do them last. You can do back, chest, chest, back, then shoulders. Okay, I'm gonna do external rotation first. You definitely want to use a lighter tube to do this exercise with. Once again, you want to watch those wrists so they're neutral and not bending back or forward. And you also want to make sure they're pulling the abdominals in, not squeezing that butt underneath. Just pull the abdominals in. Okay, you want to keep the wrists straight. Thumbs are out, elbows are in. Okay, feet about shoulder width apart. Now this is a difficult exercise, so you may want to just stand on one foot or show that as an option. Okay, we're gonna take it out, out, in, and in. This isolates the rotator cuff muscles. Now you can do this side lying on a mat or on a bench using a dumbbell. It'd basically be the exact same motion, just like this for external rotation. Okay, now if you wanted to do internal, it's a little difficult to do that with the bands, but if you were using a dumbbell, you can do that 
side lying on the bench. You just want to change your grips. Actually, Dynabands work great to do this particular exercise. Here it's a little difficult when you're doing the internal to keep those wrists straight as opposed to the external where it's pretty, pretty easy to watch out for those wrists. Okay, I usually start shoulders out with that particular exercise because it is difficult and you don't want to really do that exercise when your shoulder muscles are already fatigued. Okay, now, you can do an upright row, which I will do last with the tubes. And I'll show you how to do that with the body bar and also dumbbells. Now, what I have people do for an overhead press is I have them put a couple different tubes underneath the bench until they see which one works best for them. Because if they start out with a heavier one, and have them start out with a heavier one, if they can only do five or six, they can always switch to a lighter one. But if they start out with a lighter one and can do 15 or 20, once again, the benefits are going to be minimal. And it'll be more like breakdown training, too, if they start out heavy and have to switch. Now, what you want to have them do, this is the reason why we need to have so many platforms underneath the bench. A lot of people get scared and they think, oh, the more platforms, the harder it's going to be. Yes, in the leg section and perhaps a little bit in the tricep dips, but not when you need to have this upright as a bench. Okay, you're going to have your palms facing forward. You're going to start at shoulder level. You're going to come up, turn in just a little bit. So they may feel it a little bit in the chest and the pectoral muscles. But it's also easier on your shoulder girdle if you turn in a little bit. They're really only going to be able to do about 8 or 10 of these if they're using the correct tubing. Now you can do an overhead press using the dumbbell or the body bar, but unless you're using something heavy enough, once again, you're not going to get those benefits. So what I usually do here is superset training where we're going up and turning in just a little bit. Now we're going to do rotary. We're going to go into a lateral raise. Now the shoulders are going to be a little bit tired, and you're probably looking at most people using five to eight pounds to do this exercise. These happen to be 10. Okay, I usually have them do a lateral raise. You want to come shoulder level only and down. I usually have them do both arms a couple times first, and then I'll have them go to the right arm and then the left arm, and then both arms. Now once again, you don't have to do it that way. Now usually what I will do is the lateral raises, and then immediately I'll go into front raises. So we're really supersetting now, because we're going right into three different exercises. And once again, you can use both arms, or you can do just a single arm. Now believe me, shoulder work is very, very heavy. And you're going to see some ugly faces made out there because the weights do get very heavy. And once again, you can do both at once or alternate. Now, if you have a body bar, once again, if you're using a 12-pound body bar, that's not going to be heavy enough to do only about 10 overhead presses. Perhaps with some, yes but with others, no. So you could, say, use the tubes and then take your body bar and do those overhead presses, okay? If you don't have any dumbbells, that's one way to do it, okay? If you don't have any tubing and you have dumbbells, start out with your heavier dumbbells. Once again, you can double them up to do that overhead press. And you're gonna wanna turn in a little bit at the top. It just feels better, okay? And then you could go right into the body bar. Now. To do the front raises, you know, you can do a lot of these. These are really nice if you're, say, doing a step class and you don't want to do any more lower body work and you have 15 minutes at the end and you want to do some upper body stuff. You know, front raises are nice because you can do some squats out to the side like this. Or you can just do them stationary if you're just concentrating on the shoulders. You can just come right up shoulder level only. Once again, you don't want to go any higher because of shoulder impingement. Just come right up. Now, if you don't have the tubes, you can do just the front raises and the lateral raises with the dumbbells. You can do these in any particular order, but once again, you want to make, it, make them use heavy enough weights. You can only do about 10 repetitions, or you want to do something heavy like the tubes and then go into lighter dumbbells or heavy dumbbells and go into a lighter body bar to do the breakdown training and also different exercises so you're doing superset training. 
Okay, you can also do an upright row with the body bar, but once again, this isn't going to be very heavy, so I'll show you how to do that with the tubes also. Okay, you just want to pull up to your chin. Once again, you can do this very slow. You can pull up four and slowly down four. Or you can do it really, really, really slow. Pull it up for eight and down for eight using the slow training method. Now to do an upright row, this is a great exercise if you say if you're doing back, chest, and you go to shoulders and you're going to go right into biceps because this also hits the biceps. I put two handles, two hands, palms down. Once again, you want to make sure that they're pulling the abdominals in. Just pull up, up to the chin, down, and down. This is when it's a real advantage to being short. Your chin is closer to the ground, and you don't have to pull these things up so far. Tall people in your class will have a little bit of more of a hard time with this. I wish I had that problem. Okay, now this hits a little bit of the biceps, so this would be a great exercise, like I said, if you were doing the muscles in the order that I told you. Either chest or back, then shoulders, and then go right into biceps, because they're going to really feel this on the biceps. Okay, you can do that upright row also, obviously, with the dumbbells. Same thing, down and down, up, up, down, and down. And you can vary this also by going up two and going slowly down. That's a little bit of negative only training, except that you are doing the pulling up part. But when you're going really, really slow on the negative face, they're really going to feel that also. Okay, now, for rear deltoids, this is where you really only want about a set of three or five pound weights. If you only have threes, you can have people put two of the threes together to make six. Another reason why you need all the platforms here. So I show this motion first before I even pick up dumbbells because people need to be leaning over and leaning right onto their thighs and have their hands down. They're going to keep their elbows a little bit bent. You're going to lift, lift, and down. Okay, now you may be able to do this exercise with tubes, but this is a very difficult exercise. Okay? That's why most people can only use three or five pound weights. So the tubes may be a little bit too difficult for most of your participants. So I would stick with this exercise just using the dumbbells, where you'd lift up, up, and down. Once again, I try to avoid doing anything with the music, like up and down, because people are going to get out of control. That's why almost all the exercises you see me doing the up, up, down, and down, or up four, and down two. Etc. Now, what people are going to do here is they're going to tend to not lean over far enough and they're going to hit more of the medial deltoid. We're working the posterior deltoid, the back of the shoulder. So you want to have them leaned over the whole way to work the particular muscle group that you're trying to work. Okay, now once again, there's a million different ways that you can put this together. But the whole idea is you want to start with a difficult exercise, and if you're doing breakdown training, drop it and pick up a lighter weight and keep going. Or if you're doing superset training, you want to start with the hardest exercise, go into a little bit easier one, and into a little bit easier one, and keep going. So they're still only doing right around 10 on that first really difficult exercise, but to really strengthen the muscle more, keep going and use just a little bit easier of an exercise and a little bit different exercise. Or once again, you can slow the motion down. Or perhaps, you know, you can use one arm and do assisted training here where you can't pick it up anymore. You could use one arm at a time and drop it slowly down for the assisted training. And then there's your negative training right there. And of course, you want to make sure that you do both sides. So that's about it. And um, if I missed anything, I'm sorry, and I'll be amazed. And I hope I gave you guys some great ideas how to really get some results in your body sculpting classes. Because as we know, most of the women that come into the body sculpting classes will not go in the weight room. And you really need to give them an effective strength training workout because that's what they need to increase muscle, up their metabolism, and burn the body fat, which is what most people exercise for to do those things. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you.